Hey everyone and welcome to our class notes number 37. So in this class notes episode we will look closer at the form but very close at the applications of Hotian um, line 2 movement number 1 which could either be called Chui Shou Shi or Jie Lei Zhang. Let's get started with the ideas of the applications of this form. So we've talked about uh, a lot about the form already. Um, I will also uh, blend the video in a little later, but let's get to talk about the most important aspects of the applications here. So the first uh, thing we um, take a look at is the idea of uh, intercepting at the ribs, because this is what the name Jie uh, Lei um, Zhang applies. So Jie is intercepting, Lei are the ribs and Zhang is of obviously the, the method or the, the fist in this case, sorry, the, the palm. And uh, an easy application to understand this concept of intercepting at the ribs is something that I demonstrate here. So after crossing the hands with my partner, I strike down towards the rib area. And the important idea actually is that we do not only make contact and strike towards the ribs, obviously, but it is more than just a strike. The whole uh, quality of this movement is a pushing into the body of uh, your opponent and a pulling with the secondary hand here, with the goal to not only hurt your opponent, but also, and more importantly, to break his structure. Okay, so when we take a look at the form here, uh, then you will already see that I am not striking forward, but basically stepping forward in a really long gongbu, letting my arm sink downward and extend forward. So it's not a strike in a, a general uh, understanding, but more of a strong push forward while the secondary hand is pulling back. Okay, then the movement continues. Uh, so it's not horizontal, it's going downward, then you turn, you, you pull back and then you open up your body again. So again, pushing forward. You saw that? Like really pushing forward. So that's the form. Pushing, pulling and then uh, also sitting back on your rear leg and opening the whole body. We'll take a look at this closer again in a second. But for now, let's return to the applications. So first exercise would be to just cross hands with your partner and strike towards the ribs with the goal of not only hitting but also to break the structure of your opponent. Remember this is one of the most important concepts in Bagua Zhang that whatever you do and whatever you hit you want to change something in the body of your opponent so that he or she may not be able to regain initiative and move um, the way they would like to. Okay, so basic idea is always you are not in touch with your partner, you need to cover distance, you need to get in touch and with the first move you do, you should already try to break the structure of your opponent. So crossing hands and then striking, pushing and pulling, hurting, maybe, but more importantly, break the structure. So that's the idea behind Jie uh, Lei Zhang, intercepting at the ribs. The second idea is Chui. And Chui means sinking downward. Okay, so Chui Shou Shi in this case refers to this motion here that you strike over the, your, your partner's or your opponent's arm and pressing the arm of your opponent down. We'll get to see that a little closer soon. So crossing hands, striking from on top. So you want to depress the arm of your partner here. And again, important, you have a pulling hand, you have a pushing hand, and here is also uh, also a downward pressing force applies. Important again, you are also connecting to your opponent's arm, just as we saw in uh, the application of Jie uh, Lei Zhang, or the demonstration of it. Okay, so this is Chui Shou Shi. Now, here comes an exercise that you can do with your partner in order to understand the quality of pressing down the Chui part of it. So you start from underneath. You have your hand here, fists closed, and your partner is pressing down on your forearm. Now your goal is to change that position and to come back in the position on top. 
So what you do here is you create a pivot point with your arm, then you move your own elbow towards the elbow of your partner, and then you rotate around that pivot point in order to gain the top position. So roll around your arm, use your elbow to connect, and then change the position from underneath, a passive position, to a dominant position on top. Very important concept. And again, we change to a little more um, complex partner exercise, but this only involves the secondary hand. So here you just grab the wrist of your partner and basically you do the same move that we just saw, but always grabbing and controlling the hand and wrist of your partner. Basically same exercise, though you want to uh, create the pivot point, you want to roll over your, uh, you want to move your elbow towards the elbow of your partner and then change from the bottom position to the top position in a dominant situation. Okay, important idea again, never stay underneath, always move on top to regain initiative basically. So the next partner exercise preparing for the applications is very interesting. Here you do the same a basic drill that you saw before. So you're starting from a position from underneath your opponent's or your partner's arm. You grab the wrist, you roll over with your hand and now what happens is that you extend your arm and you create tension from your fist upward to your shoulder and down into your lower back or your, the center of your body maybe you want to call it Mingman area, whatever, but it's about the connection from your fist here through your lats down to the back, uh, to the center of your, your body, Mingman area. And um, here in this case, after rolling over your partner's arm, you want to create tension in this, uh, in this structure here and then press against the par your partner's arm from the inside. Your partner has a job to do as well because he also creates tension so that you get feedback. So you can really push into your partner's arm and when the, when the pressure uh, is really felt, then you both step sideways. And now it's his turn. He rolls over, he creates tension, he starts to press in my arm and with this pressure we move sideways. Okay, so we both have to understand the connection from Mingman through the shoulder and into our hands. Let's see this from the uh, other perspective, from inside. Again, I roll over his hand, create tension and press into my partner's arm. And once the pressure is uh, strong enough, we both move sideways. Okay, so roll over, create pressure and then move sideways. This is a pretty awkward exercise first, but uh, very interesting um, after a while. So now we go back to the idea of, um, of the intercepting at the ribs palm, the jie lei zhang. Um, again, after striking towards the ribs here, let's move back for just a fraction of a second here. So crossing, striking towards the ribs. Okay, so here again, I'm striking, I'm pushing, I'm pulling. I try to break the structure of my opponent. And now because I have connected my arm to his arm, I have an opportunity for a joint lock, but I also can further break his structure for setting up throws, takes downs and the like. Okay, so I use now this connection of my arm in order to move my whole body mass backwards and pull him with me. Just a short burst of energy and I pull backwards. So he, out of his weak and broken structure, gets pulled forward and now I immediately change direction again in order to strike towards his belly with my hand. Bam. Okay, so that's the idea. Let's see that again. Crossing hands, striking to, towards the ribs, intercepting at the ribs, GLA, and then I move my whole body backwards, yank him forwards, and immediately once he starts to move forward, I move back into his direction in order to strike uh, towards the belly in this case. If you practice this with a partner, just practice with open hands and just slap the belly with the outside of your hand. Okay, you could easily just leave your, your forearm um, horizontally in front of your partner's uh, belly so there would be a, a bigger impact. You could use your elbow or you could also use the, the outside of your fist here in order to strike more uh, forcefully. But for now, that's the idea. Okay, and if you remember this, uh, the form, uh, the pulling back is here 
again. Let's see that. So, creating this, and after the strike, we then pull back and then open the whole body again. Okay, so that was the idea that was just demonstrated in the application video. Okay, let's go back here. Next step um, is uh, one of the most important concepts in Bagua Zhang uh, that we will ever find, and it's not unique to Bagua Zhang at all. But the idea is that if someone moves forward on center line in order to strike or attack you, the first thing, if you have the chance to, you would want to move out of center line and into an angle towards your opponent in order to avoid, of course, the incoming strike, but also to immediately move into a more optimal position. So here I have my partner stepping towards me with a straight fist towards my belly area. Now, in, as soon as he moves, I try to move into a 45 degree angle. I intercept his arm with my own forearm and I protect my face from an incoming uh, strike here, okay? Very important to understand is that I don't, do not only move sideways in order to avoid the incoming strike, but I also do not block or hit the arm, but I intercept it. And this is a very important difference in quality, because if I would just hit his arm and block his arm forcefully, the arm usually gets moved out of the line, but then the body rearranges and the arm would be immediately back to where it was before and he would actually gain some nice momentum in order to turn and uh, strike towards my face. This is something that we do not want. We want control, we want contact and from there um, play our game instead of running uh, or, or being behind of what our partner is doing. So intercept here at the arm. Now the same move that we've practiced before rolling over the arm in order to regain the uh, top position. So again, stepping out into a 45 degree angle, intercepting his arm, but staying in touch. Okay, so he should feel no pain or no, no pressure here. It's not a hard block. It's really being soft and taking the arm where it is. And from there, we talk further. We control the arm. We change our hand uh, so that we are on top and again immediately uh, in, the, in the second we get control over his arm in top position we have to let go of this hand again in order to protect our face because this hand is just it's coming right so one more time he steps in I step out into a 45 degree angle I change position so my hand is not down but on top and I immediately raise my hand in order to protect the face Okay, so stepping in, protecting my, my face here. Now this hand grabs the wrist. I change from underneath to the top position. And then immediately I let go of this hand in order to protect my face. Okay, so I am out of the way. I'm still protecting. But now here comes the next step because that's not, uh, we're not done yet, right? So after stepping out, we now use this uh, idea of pushing into our opponent's arm that we've practiced uh, before. And with this next move, we want to move further towards the back of our partner. Here, I have the connection. I raise my hand. And here, I now start to press into his arm and tr I start to move into his, or towards his back, which will create such a tension in his body that he will further need, feels the need to turn towards me, which would be the only reasonable way to move anyways, because he wouldn't turn backwards. Then I'm in his back. If he does it, fine, but usually not. Okay, so turning, stepping out in, uh, towards his back. Now I'm almost in a 90 degree angle towards his body. And now the, sec the hand here on top 
actually gets another meaning. So it's not only about protecting your face, but it's something that um, is talked about quite a lot in uh, jiu-jitsu circles nowadays where they talk about the problem or the idea of a double trouble. Okay, so I am stepping out of the way, I'm moving towards his back, and now I have one hand or one fist pointing directly towards his ribs, you will see that later, and one hand pointing straight towards his face. So stepping out, rolling over, creating two problems at once. Yeah, so he has to worry about his body position. He has to worry about the hand here, which is in a dominant position, pressing down on his arm. And he has to worry about the hand, which is basically pointing straight towards his face. So on one hand, this is still protecting me from this hand, but it's creating a signal for him that something is happening. And it, bring, and it brings him further into the situation that he needs to react to my actions. Okay, so stepping out like here, and now double trouble. I am able to strike towards the ribs here, but I'm also able to create another strike from on top. So that's the idea. Okay, many, many concepts here in this application. That's why it makes, uh, why it's so interesting. Now, uh, now then after that, we can freely connect it to other uh, movements that we've practiced in, in class before. Uh, for example, here we see the connection from uh, which, which we are practicing right now, to the fourth uh, motion in line one, which is um, the golden dragon spreads its claws. It's uh, um, uh, the, the idea again of this application is to spread the attention and the focus or to separate the focus of our opponent. And it works really well from this situation here. So one more time, stepping out, raising my hand, and I grab the hand on top. I also grab the hand on, on bottom here. And now, again, he has two problems to face. He can feel this here happening, and he can also feel this one happening. And wherever I feel more confident, I move first. So in this case, I, I yank him down with, with this uh, little wrist lock here. Um, and then I change to the other direction, to the other hand, in order to take him down. Okay, this is the Jin Long Tan Zhua from line one. All right, stepping out. And now we connect it to, or we stay with the idea of, um, of the Jie Lei Zhang application. So let's see that again. Um, it's a little fast now. Try to follow as good as you can. So this was connecting it to line one, application number four, Jin Long Tan Zhua. And now we move back to the original idea. He strikes forward to my belly. I move out into a 45 degree angle. I change from bottom position to top position. I lift my secondary hand in order to create double trouble. Now he wants to strike forward or moves forward with his upper hand, which then I can cross lead and pull towards my left and immediately strike down towards his belly. Yes, so one more time, intercepting, creating a problem, changing or crossing hands and moving from here into the pull and strike down towards the belly. Now we can connect it to further applications. In this case, I always like to end my uh, applications with a nice takedown or a nice throw. So let's go for a hip throw afterwards. After striking, I now use his broken structure to jump in for uh, a regular hip throw. Jumping in and taking him, him, taking him down. So one, two, three, crossing, jumping and Going straight to the hip throw, crossing, striking, jump in before and take him down. So that's uh, that makes for a very nice partner practice, a lot of fun. And now uh, we see another version after the hip throw where we go for a foot sweep.
Okay, it's the basic application still, but then we sweep the foot. Let's see that one more time. Puke. And that's it. All right, so this was uh, class notes number 37. Hope you enjoyed and see you again next week.